Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee, the Climate Viewer Guy from ClimateViewer.com with Facts Minus Fear Porn. And I've got a really exciting health update on my Graves disease. And I want to deal with the question, am I a military psyop? I mean, am I a freaking MK Ultra? Is, are the military beaming, you know, thoughts into my brain to make me do the things I do? Ooh. Um, let's deal with some conspiracy and some conspiratards today. And I definitely want to update you on my health because I got stellar news today. As I, I was checking uh, comments on my latest video, I don't know if you guys saw it, uh, 5G and broadband from space and airplanes. We got motherfucking 5G on this motherfucking plane. Um... I love memes. Sorry, just that one particularly cracks me up. I had to make it. Please forgive me. Um, I was reading the comments on it, and a lot of people were saying, you know, you're looking much better. And I wanted to let everybody know the really good news because I'm I'm positively stoked. Um, I couldn't have done this without you know all the help from you know you climate viewers, beaming love, beaming uh, the prayers and 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 all the good information that's been sent my way um i have done many things i'll talk a little bit about what i've done um probably in a more lengthy video but i just got my second blood draw um results back and it confirms what the last one did my thyroid levels are perfectly freaking normal for the first time in nine years of having Graves' disease, I do not have Graves' disease. Um, what you can see here is that my TSH, or my thyroid stimulating hormone, which was at 20, and you can see the normal range is 0.4 to 4.5, is now at 2. Right dead in the middle, perfect. Um, a regular range for my free T3, 2 to 4.4 is at a 3.8. Once again, right in the sweet spot. My free T4 is a hair, a skosh low. So that would technically make me a tiny bit hypothyroid. But being hyperthyroid, Graves disease... For nine years and having everything level out the way it has is a freaking modern day miracle. Uh, my dot, my family prat can't figure it out, scratching their head. My endocrinologist, when I go back to see her on the 20th, I'm gonna be like, your face. I dare you to tell me that I need my thyroid cut out now when it's going perfectly fine. So I could not pos you know, possibly be any more thrilled about these results you're seeing on the screen. I got this in the mail today. I was going to call them tomorrow to find just to find out. Um, but, you know, I already kind of knew. Um, and, you know, a lot of this goes you know, straight to dietary changes. Um, I made a lot of changes. I quit dairy. Um, so no milk, no cheese. You know, I occasionally cheat a little bit. Um, you know, the, the occasional taco, I have to have my cheese on that, but that's, you know, just, it's very rare. Um, but no milk at all. Um, no gluten. So I'm bread free. It really sucks. I miss bread more than anything. Um, and you know, I'm taking a supplement, which I'll talk about, uh, later on. I, I don't know that it's for everybody, but it has, um, iodine from sea kelp and selenium, magnesium, you know, a lot of the things that were in the books I've read, peer-reviewed studies, you know, like it had all of that in one. Um, you know, I've been taking some CBD oils, rubbing it on my thyroid. My thyroid has obviously shrunk considerably, which is a good thing. Um, so I'm pretty stoked about all that. I couldn't possibly be happier. In addition, I've been stuck at 135 pounds. As you guys can see in some of my older videos, I was stuck at 135 pounds and couldn't gain a bit of weight at all. And I'm now up to 160. So what can you say? Your boy is happy. Very, very happy. 
Um, and, uh, you know, I want to keep on this path. I want to thank everybody who donated to the GoFundMe. It's at GoFundMe.com slash fix my thyroid. Um, you know, buying that juicer, uh, getting, you know, the Nutribullet. Um, I do a smoothie every morning. Um, my smoothie consists of mangoes, blueberries, walnuts, orange juice, and coconut milk. Um, so if anybody, you know, wants to try it, it's freaking delicious. Um, but that's what I have for breakfast and I've, you know, given up the coffee. I occasionally cheat on that as well because I've got two kids and when you got to get up that early in the morning, school really sucks. Um, but you know, for the most part, I have been on a pretty strict diet and I've changed a lot of things. I'll go into all of this in detail in, in a later video because I'm sure there's a lot of other people suffering from Graves disease who may be able to follow some of the steps that I've taken and have similar results. And I'd love to hear that. Um, but that's not what this video is about. I wanted to really, you know, touch on something that kind of hit a nerve with me and you know I, I love to respond to a good trolling um when it's necessary and uh you know so i had this individual and i'm going to bring it up on the screen over here who was uh pretty thrilled you know this is going to show you an example of a good comment so Hi, Jim. Troy from Omaha. The, the weather modification history website looks and performs fabulously. I just want to thank you again for all that you do and have done and bring the hard facts, science, and critical attention to this highly technical and secretive world. I follow your work on YouTube as well. I think you have a big brain, a big heart, and big cojones. You are among the most brilliant, gifted researchers out there, and you have you ask so precious little for what you give. I hope your health is good and improving. It is. And I look forward to you, more of your mind blowing work. To me, you're a modern day hero. Cheers. And I love it when I get that kind of stuff. It's so, you know, keeps me going. I appreciate it. Um, Troy, thank you so much for your comment. Um, and you know, it's, it's always kind of like, Oh my God you know, hero. I mean, it, I don't, this was, this was a hobby seven years ago and it's really turned into a passion. Um, but I'm curious by nature. I was born in the year of the dragon and apparently according to the Chinese Zodiac dragons control the weather. So maybe it was written in the stars that this would be what I would be doing. But you know, that's why I created weather modification history.com and I didn't, you know, you know, it's not all just me. If you guys follow weather modification history on Facebook, you know that I want you all to know that that's mostly Dominic. I mean, almost 95% of what you're seeing on Facebook, uh, is Dominic Marama. And you can see him at the, at the footer of the, um, you know, the page here. But weathermodificationhistory.com is separate from my climateviewer.com and climateviewer.org because I wanted it to just be facts minus any of my opinions or anything like that. So you can see Dominic's hard work in the view, uh, news gallery where you can see newspapers that range from as early as June 20th, 1891 all the way to present and i'm talking right now we have 776 articles in here he just sent me the most recent batch i think there's close to a thousand in there by now i'm going to update the website real soon to put them on there but you can see all kinds of stuff you're not going to see anywhere else you know, like Tesla's tidal wave uh, weapon and how to control the weather with electric shocks. You know, this is 1912 and it just goes on and on and on. So that's what the guy's talking about. I mean, this is stuff you can't find anywhere else. So I can, that's why I get a lot of the, you know, this has got, it's too good to be true. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, having all this information in one spot, people that are doing it, all the patents, the programs, the laws associated with it, um, the map, you know, the weather modification map on climateviewer.org, 
presentations, actual solutions, and a, a timeline that shows you from pluviculture to cloud seeding to geoengineering and geophysical warfare. So you can see from, it goes in reverse order from earliest uh, to the latest. Um, uh, the last post I have on here is from April of 2018. I need to put some more on there. But things like the U.S. Department of Agriculture sprays electrified water over Texas all the way back to scrolling down to the bottom. Let's go way back. Uh, you know, Irving P. Crick's ground-based cloud seeder, the guy who invented it. Um, U.S. Air Force gives villagers two choice, live with the trails or move. Nineteen forty-eight to present. Um, this is my chemtrails started in nineteen forty-eight post. Contrail serious complaints begin nationwide. Um, and for that, you know, I get called a disinfo shill because I don't toe the line. You know that everybody else does. I try to, you know, be a historian about it, and that's what weather modification history is about. So if you guys want to um, check it out, and if you haven't already, please do. But this website is a collaboration between myself, Jim Lee, and Dominic Marama, my homeboy, my brother from another mother up in Ontario, or, uh, in Canada. Um, and that's what we do on this website. Nonetheless, you're going to get your haters. So I got this comment um, from T Paradise or Tammy J Paradis. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, Dane is part of the military psyop to convince the public that the military are doing this because the planet is in crisis when in fact they are the ones creating weather anomalies that with their tinkering. I actually agree with the second part of that. Uh, this weather war, this is weather warfare and we're all the target. Now I've done many presentations on this. You guys have probably seen a couple of them. Um, you know, one of my presentations is literally called weaponizing nature. Um, but regardless, uh, he is still, he still has some good info though. <laughs> she says about Dane. That's great. Um, and then she goes on to show this, uh, you know, global research CA, the ultimate weapon of mass destruction, owning the weather for military purposes, blah, blah, blah. And I think this actually... If I, you know, now that I think about it, I think this is actually an article that references me. Now that I think about it, in fact, it does. Um, yeah, so that's kind of funny. Uh, where is it at? It's in here somewhere, though. But regardless, uh, they referenced uh, me and weathermodificationhistory.com in their articles. So that's beside the point. This is an older article, actually. So beside the point. Um, I've been following him, meaning Dane, and Jim Lee for years, and immediately they just screamed military psyop to me. So I was always cautious and did my own digging. I later saw Jim in uniform. I dig on my own now, and there is so much info. So she saw me in uniform. What? And, you know, whole, you know a couple people retweeted this. And Callie Furies, a lady friend of mine who runs Op Chem Trails on uh, Twitter. If you guys don't know about Op Chem Trails, check it out. Follow them on Twitter. So, can I ask, when you say in uniform, do you mean the same as uh, the others or in literally? I'm assuming that the first, but thought I should check rather than assume. Literally, I saw a photo of him wearing a military uniform. <laughs> And this just kind of made me laugh because you, you you know where she saw that that picture in a video I put out. So it's no surprise that you know she saw me in a military uniform because I put the picture out. That's me right there in U.S. Air Force basic training, 1997. This was me on an ROTC trip going down to Cape Canaveral and. That's the Saturn V rocket, and me, I'm right there standing next to it. So you can see how big it is. Um, you know, so I've always been fascinated with this because, guess what? My father was in the military. He was a nuclear missile launch technician. I was born on Vandenberg Air Force Base. Um, 
yeah, I, I was a Boy Scout before that. So, um, you know, I went Boy Scouts, ROTC, and into the military. And I thought everything was going to work out. I got a perfect score on my ASVAB. So I got a 98 out of a 98 on my, you know, pre-test for the military. And that meant I could pick any job I wanted. And what happened was... I decided I was going to pick spy satellite optics and I was going to have a tech school that was going to last three and a half years and go straight from tech school. Um, ROTC guaranteed that I would have had two stripes when I got out of basic training. And then when I got out of my tech school, I would have went straight to officer training school to become an officer. Just like my father had. He went from enlisted to officer. And he sat in a silo in Vandenberg Air Force Base where I was born. But, you know, things don't always work out the way you plan. And when I went to basic training in 1997, um, four drill instructors came in in the middle of the night on Memorial Day night and assaulted our flight. They were all drunk. Uh, you could smell the alcohol in the breath uh, on their breath when I let them in the door after they repeatedly tried to get in without ID and I refused because there was strict orders about, you know, the policy on how you let people in and they were constantly testing you. And I was very firm. Nobody got in until they put their ID right there up on the freaking glass. And I, you know, put the flashlight on it. And then when they did, they slammed the door on me. And that's a big steel door. But I'm a big boy, so I could take it. And uh, then they proceeded to assault our flight. Um, our flight commander... They grabbed him by the wrist and pulled his hand over his head and broke his elbow. Um, they took, you know, went from rack to rack and did what they normally do, you know, toss your rack, toss everything that you've spent so much time preparing. But they went well above and beyond that when they put my hand in a lock in my locker and slammed the locker shut. You know, I don't remember how many times, but basically broke a couple fingers and blood everywhere. Um, you know, and of course I being, a you know, part, you know, part-time martial artist fought back and harmed one of the drill instructors. It was three times my size. Uh, things didn't work out so well. Uh, so regardless, I ended up with a broken knee and this photo you see in the top, right? The reason I'm in that white uniform sitting there is because I'm in sweatpants and a t-shirt. Because they had broken my knee and I was put in medical hold for six months in basic training. Now, U.S. Air Force basic training is only six weeks. And to be in basic training for six months is worse than a year of prison. Because they own your ass. And things didn't work out the way I planned. So... Very quickly on, I learned that I, because of the injury I sustained at the hands of my drill instructor, was now disqualified from the military. Um, I actually talked to a glass-eyed chaplain. Uh, never forget him. His eye just would go to the side. Sweetest guy ever. Looked me with his good eye in my eye and said, "You, they're just keeping you here until you get well enough for them to send you home so you can't sue them. And you're not going back to basic training. And it broke my heart. And, uh, you know, I went to the area defense office at Lackland Air Force Base, talked to a lawyer, did everything I could to try to stay in. Wasn't happening. So I ended up with a pre-service separation. And that meant that I was never there. Not a... You know, it's a very atypical DD-214. Anybody who's familiar with the military may know exactly what I'm talking about. But basically because I was assaulted by four drunk drill instructors, one of which I beat the piss out of, um, you know, there goes my career in the military. Let's, let's just say my father was none too pleased when I came home from basic training on crutches. Um, but to, to have that held over my head after, you know, making a video about it, it's kind of, kind of ironic. <laughs> um, you know, so, um, my, obviously my, my father, you know, he got out of the military and to, you know, he took me and my brother 
to Sumter, South Carolina, and my mother and him divorced when I was two, and she married another military man. So in this other photo you see here at Offutt Air Force Base, I'm standing next to my sister when my father-in-law, or my um, stepfather, he uh, retired as a 30-year chief master sergeant. And I actually got an award from the military for being a military brat, even though I wasn't one, which is why I'm chuckling so much in that photo. And she got one too. <laughs> um, but no, I didn't go to Aviano, Italy, or Japan with them. Um, nonetheless, I got my little award. So that's why I'm laughing kind of hard in that photo. I'm like, isn't this ironic? They're, if they only knew how much I abhor uh, my military experience. <laughs> and I went on to go see a bunch of Fish and Grateful Dead and Widespread Panic concerts afterwards. So that's all of this was in a video that I did. Um, you know, and it's on my About page. And you can see it. It's on uh, climateviewer.com slash about. Uh, Climate Viewers All Seeing Eye logo. The video's right here. Um, is this not a change? There it goes. And uh, uh, and I, I added about Jim Lee to the title today just cause, so people know. But um, yeah, that's me and my military psyop double wide. And uh, this is my, my uncle Johnny actually built this. This is my um, tool shed. And it's made from a trailer that was damaged during Hurricane Hugo. So it's like a portion of a trailer. <laughs> um, and, you know, there's all our shovels and rakes and stuff for doing gardening and stuff. But yeah, big time military psyop guy, um, as you can see. Yeah, you know, that that's me double wide and that's this is where I live. Um but regardless, so I made this video and I go through things like people were, you know, hating on my T shirt because it had pyramids in it and I'm like, That's the Legend of Zelda, dude. I mean, don't you know about the Legend of Zelda? And, you know, on and on and yeah, I said, you know, like I said I was in the Boy Scouts, you know, I talk about that. So if you want to know more about me, um, you know, watch this video. Obviously, this person watched this video, and despite all of that, still says all this crap. No, uh, she's uh, literally. I saw him in a, wearing a military uniform. Uh, Callie Fury is glad I checked then. Interesting. Have you approached him about it? She said, no, because if you ever read any military or gov history about psyops, guy doesn't come out and say, yeah, I'm just a disinfo shell for the military gov and military motto is deny, 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 period. <laughs> you can't, you cannot help a conspirator. I swear to God, even when you're like, you're making a video about yourself, telling people stuff that you normally wouldn't tell yeah, it's none of your damn business has always been my motto, but I'm trying to be a little more transparent. And this is what I get is stupid effing people on YouTube going, I saw him in a military uniform. That means that he's got to be a military psyop, a durr. Um, and anyway, so <laughs> it, it just, it's, it's kind of funny to me. Yes, I understand, although not asking for an explanation le also leaves room for assumptions, as my previous question demonstrated. Any idea of what kind of uniform? Well, I mean, you guys can all see that that's a U.S. Air Force basic training uniform. I was in, uh, and it, sh it shows right there, uh, 323rd Training Squadron, Flight 406, Rank Airman Basic. Um, and yes, I was going to be two stripes out of basic because of my ROTC. Uh, but that's the kind of uniform for anybody who was curious. But regardless, um, so, yeah, Bailey to her credit, so, uh, so have I. I feel more comfortable with resonating climate viewer now. You know, she saw the same video. There's still, there are still Jim Lee, lots of good information as an introduction to all of this stuff, but still a diversion from the real activity like shutting down Canadian shipping lines and oil production, attacking Iceland, hitting Yemen and the Asian coastal areas and on and on. Like I'm supposed to cover everything in the fucking book or I'm certainly a military psyop. That's laughable. 
uh, to say the least. Uh, my God. Not to mention the daily attack on U.S. citizens, which is horrific. So I responded, yes, I went to the U.S. Air Force. I was assaulted by drill instructors, left in medical hold for six months, and discharged with a pre-service separation and a check meaning, you were never here, please don't sue us. I never completed basic training, shaking my head. Link to video where I showed the damn uniform. Sorry, but I call them as I see them, and you scream military psyops. I watch and follow everything on your channel and Danes, Mick West, and others. You three scream military psyop, in my humble opinion. The Weather War 101 guy doesn't, but has gone missing now. So have others, but not you three. So now, because Weather War 101, motherfucker who doesn't even have a real name, has never even used his real voice in any video ever, is more credible and more believable than me, Jim Lee, PSYOP, MK Ultra specialist. <laughs> it's like, fuck. So anyway, I responded in my usual hateful Scorpio manner. Well, you just can't help stupid. First, I teach others about PSYOPs and how they work. I'm going to show that in a second on my propaganda page. Second, I put that photo out there. Derp. Finally, I got a special NSA interview for putting out this map. And I'll show that too. So, um, I actually have the world's only NSA map. Only. In the entire world. But I'm a government shill exposing the government. Does this make any con, hashtag conspiratarded? Um, she says, but you push disinfo, so the criticism is warranted. And there are so many other many other things that I. But I am certain you wouldn't deny or refute each and every every one deny deny military and government motto. Would I mean wouldn't. Oh, we have another reply. Nothing to hide. Just, just ask. Read my bio. Maybe he was referring. Maybe she was referring to AZ Skywatcher. Go figure. Um, go figure. Anyway, um, but she certainly seemed like she was responding to me, not you, AZ Skywatcher. So I think you're in the clear. You're not the one with the military uniform out there, homeboy. Um, but this, this all goes back to credibility. And that's why, you know, I talk about propaganda, fake news, and activism. And the purpose for this is that, you know, people use fear to divide. And with enough fear, uncertainty, and doubt, um, people will just completely ignore everything you got to say. And that's really the game here. I don't know who this, you know, dumb woman is. Um, but you know, obviously she lives in a fear state and can't trust anything. And I believe she's on the mental plantation, you know, so I suggest, you know, if you guys have not read slave speak, the anatomy of slave speak, please do. Because for me, it changed my life. I've had many people who've messaged me saying that it changed their lives. But, you know, you know, once you understand political slave speak, the language used to establish and maintain master-slave relationships, you become very aware about how those who don't understand slave speak can be dominated, subjugated, and controlled by words, essentially enslaved by words. Correspondingly, you become impervious to external control through words. In other words, you enjoy more freedom. You have more options available to you. Quote, it is hard to fight an enemy who has outposts in your head. And clearly, they live rent-free in her head. Um, sad to say. Ideas are more powerful than guns. We would not let our enemies have guns. Why should we let them have ideas? Joseph Stalin Language creates spooks that get into our head and hypnotize us. So please read the anatomy of slave speak and check out my propaganda page. I have slave speak TV here. 
Um, if you hit play on this, it actually has a playlist with 29 videos um, that'll really break down for you uh, language thinking and levels of abstraction, church government and the main terrorcrats, church government and the main terrorcrats continued interpreting media, neurolinguistic programming, human resource sources, social engineering in the 20th century. If this is, if you want to spend a day watching something that'll just blow your freaking mind, watch through this Slave Speak TV playlist. It'll blow your freaking mind. But I go through all of the stuff on here, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, how FUD is used in marketing, public relations, politics, propaganda, and fucking Twitter. Um, but FUD, if you create enough fear, uncertainty, and doubt about anything, um, people will re refuse to believe anything. Carl Sagan said it best, quote right here on the sidebar of every page with a link to the um, the bold area links you to the anatomy of slave speak. One of the saddest lessons of history is this. If we've been bamboozled long enough, we tend to reject any evidence of the bamboozle. We're no longer interested in finding out the truth. The bamboozle has captured us. It's simply too painful to acknowledge, even to ourselves, that we've been taken. Once you give a charlatan power over you, you almost never get it back. The man, Carl Sagan. Um, and that's true. So, um, and of course, the Scientologist L. Ron Hubbard, he said it even better. Technique 88, on control and lying. The only way you can control people is to lie to them. Read that. Put that one in your pipe and smoke it. And I go through all the other stuff, the false left right paradigm, how television works, neuro-linguistic programming, Perception management and destroying reputations. Now this is what this bitch is doing on face on Twitter right now. And Ben Franklin said it best. Glass, China, and reputation are easily cracked and never well mended. That's why um, you know, I have a little bit of Trump in me. You you punch at me, I punch back. And the reason why is because those who seek to damage my reputation, damage my cause, damage my ability to influence people, damage my ability to tell the truth. You know, it takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. Warren Buffett. Um, but as far as psyops go, military psyops, there are two different versions of this, the military and the corporate version. And I go through them in depth on my propaganda page. It's climateviewer.com slash propaganda. If you have not read this stuff, I suggest you do. It's very powerful stuff. Um, in the DOD, they are known as psychological operations, psychological warfare, narrative networks. That's the new one. Narrative networks and mind war. Okay. And then in the corporate world, they are known as neuro-linguistic programming and public relations, PR, and most importantly, perception management. And this is how pretty much the whole world works right now. The, the, the process is simple. You do a perception audit. What do people think about chemtrails? You come up with communication objectives. I want to change their perception, what they think about these chemtrails. You target the audience, chemtards, positioning and key messages. Here are our key points. Uh, you always hear about it on politics, whether it's Fox or CNN. Oh, quit giving me the talking points. That's where that part comes in. Core program elements, give a timeline, budget and control, evaluation, situational analysis, and then you do another perception audit. Did we change the minds of those we see, seek to, you know, do perception management on? No, it's not working. Let's come up with new communication objectives and repeat the wheel. So that's how mind control works and psyops works and, and psychological operations. All of it works on this process right here. 
all documented on um, you know my propaganda page. So I find it you know mildly hilarious that you know I'm getting you know and I and I'm just I'm picking on Tammy uh, Paradise. I guess that's how you would Paradise. Paradis. Um, anyway, Paradis info. Um, I get this, you know, a lot, you know, for people, you know, it's too good to be true. This guy, there's no way this guy did all this himself. And, you know, I'm a graphics artist. I'm a programmer. I do this stuff at night mainly. Um, but if you have not seen, uh, my page, the new world order technocrats in the surveillance state, what you would realize is I talk more about this. I was talking about this before Edward Snowden. You can go to twitter.com slash resonate in my Twitter account. And I can prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt that I was talking about something called Oz can Zuckus before Snowden ever said the first word. And it's also known as the five eyes, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, UK, and U S. Um, and it gets a little bigger. Uh, the five eyes, those are the main ones. They are also known as the Anglosphere. Back when I was researching this on my map, it was called Echelon. We found out it was called PRISM and X Key Score and all the other, you know, acronyms they have for all the programs related to it. But it's actually more than just the five eyes. It's the nine eyes, Denmark, France, the Netherlands, and Norway. And the 14 eyes, which include Germany, Belgium, Italy, Spain, and Sweden. And I go through about all of that stuff. How Russia buys access to the Stone Ghost Network. How the FISA courts is access to the Stone Ghost Network. How U.S. corporations have access to the Stone Ghost Network. How Stone Ghost was used against WikiLeaks. To dis with social media sock puppets, fake accounts, where military operators can use thousands of uh, different, you know, fake accounts simultaneously. Uh, you can see it at the bottom. References are down there. Persona management software is what it's called. Um, but regardless, Stone Ghost and Monsanto versus anti-GMO activists in Paris and an entire timeline of the Five Eyes, Ozcan Zucca, Stone Ghost, and the New World Order, starting with, you know who, the Council of Foreign Relations. So, I've done my homework on this, and I go through the history of the New World Order, and I break down, you know, the post-New World map post-war new world map and how you know what was set out to be a new moral world order new world moral order just became a new world order and they took the morals right out of it because there are those on the left who would say once having joined the one world federated government, no nation could secede or revolt because with the atom bomb in its possession, the federal government of the world would blow that nation off the face of the earth. Um, and Milton Mayer said in 1949, we must haul down the American flag, haul it down, stamp on it, spit on it. And what are their goals? Does this sound like the modern day Democrat Party far leftist agenda, the new world order to achieve permanent peace through universal disarmament enforced by law? To take everybody's guns and only the United Nations would have them. That is a fact. That is their goal. We shall have one a world government, whether you like it or not, by conquest or by consent. James Warburg of the Council of Foreign Relations. So that's the goal here, guys. And I'm very transparent about all of that. Um, you know, Henry Kissinger and his quotes about, you know, if you know, Americans would be outraged if UN troops entered LA to restore order tomorrow. They will be grateful. This is especially true if they were told that there was an outside threat from beyond, whether real or promulgated, that threatened our very existence. It is then that all the peoples of the world will plead with world leaders to deliver them from this evil, whether it be climate change 
or gr little green men from Mars or the return of God, you know, brought to us by Project Blue Beam holograms. That's what he's talking about. The one thing every man fears is the unknown. When presented with this scenario, individual rights will be willingly relinquished for the guarantee of their will, their well-being granted to them by their world government. And he said that in 1992, and we all know what happened in 2001. Um, the New World Order cannot happen without U.S. participation as the most significant single component. Yes, there will be a New World Order, and it will force the United States to change its perceptions. What did we just say about perception management? And then September 11th, fear overcomes America, rights dissolves, liberty disappears, surveillance explodes, Orwell nods. And I have all the references for that. So to that, I say, nothing is private, nothing is secure. The eyes of the New World Order are watching, and you have been warned. And like I linked to her in this comment, even though, you know, she just totally ignored it, here's my Five Eyes map showing everything like the Comprehensive National Cybersecurity Initiative Data Center, or the Utah Data Center, uh, where Hillary Clinton's emails are. Every email, every phone call, in the world is in this facility uh you just can't make this stuff up and that's what it looks like it uses so much water that the people in utah were talking about cutting off their water in protest because of the server farms in there yes that little dot down there is a car that's a truck uh, it's an absolutely huge data facility and there are many of them so I map these out all around the world, um, you know, for that specific purpose so that people could see all of the different, you know, listening stations and outposts from around the world. Um, you know, the Georgia Cryptologic Center, you know, CENTCOM and Texas Cryptologic Center and, you know, the list aerospace data facility Southwest and then the data facility Colorado, aka the golf balls. Um, this map by itself took me three to four months to make. And if you really want to combine it all together, you can come over here to Climate Viewer 3D and see them all simultaneously. And what you have is the five eyes, which I've mapped out. And they're the little, um, all seeing eye triangles in red undersea cables where they monitor your internet access. And uh, over here in America, you have blue uh, airplanes, which are drones. And you can click on any of these and, you know, see what they're about. And the white circles are Department of Homeland Security fusion centers. Now, do you think that the government wants me putting this out on the map? My website has been hacked so many freaking times that I literally had to leave WordPress and write my web page from scratch with no passwords, logins, or databases to hack in order to keep this crap online. So, irony not lost on me when I'm seeing fools, you know, calling me a military shill. Um, this is information you will not find on any other website on the internet. I sent it to Glenn Greenwald. I sent it to Alex Jones at InfoWars. Um, I was actually interviewed by InfoWars at Edward Griffin's thing. And uh, just recently, um, you know, they, and they never aired it. You know, I was at an, an Ed Griffin conference and InfoWars, I showed him the map and the, the guy interviewing me and the lady who was doing, you know, holding the microphone. Um, they were both like, holy crap, Alex is going to, you know, piss himself when he sees this. They never showed it to a soul. And they never will because, you know, I'm the realest guy in the room, period. And I always will be. And I continue to, you know, push the boundaries. Um, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. So, hey, man, you know, there's always going to be haters and conspirators. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a conspirator drink. Um, so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. If you guys want to know more about me, go to climateviewer.com slash about. Um, bring it up on the screen right here. 
Uh, you can read all about Jim Lee, the climate viewer guy. And, uh, you know, there's all my information. You can see all the citations. I've been cited by export.gov, you know, on, you know, the Forum for Climate Engineering Assessment. Uh, David Keith has cited my stuff in some of his papers. Um, MIT University, the United Nations has cited my work. Um, you know, if you're a hater, kiss my ass. Your boy over here is doing hard work and, and getting, you know, citations as a result. And, um, you know, I've been mentioned in many other um, places. Um, Alana Freeland has mentioned me in both of her books. You know, and this is just getting started. You know, I've been seven years working at this as a hobby. And I'm never going to stop. Um, but like I said, the video is right here at the bottom of the about page. You can watch the whole thing. Just click on it. It'll fire up the video, flip through it. There's me in military uniform, my original logos back when I was anonymous and nobody knew my name. Um, and I was just resonated. That's why it's facebook.com slash resonated. And I'm on steam on resonated. If you want to play a video game with me on Twitter, resonated. Um, I actually had youtube.com slash resonated, but lost my damn login and password. So it's R three Z and eight D instead. Um, but regardless, um, I started out as resonated and I eventually, you know, put myself out there as Jim Lee, you know, my real name and address phone number on my website, because I want this to be taken seriously. And now, you know, I've gone so far as to go to the American Meteorological Society um, and, you know, actually interview all of the scientists. You can see that under the AMS 2018 archive where I actually interviewed the geoengineering and uh, cloud seeding scientists. I interviewed Raytheon, UCAR, the U.S. Naval Research Labs, my um, hero, Dr. Jim Fleming, the world's leading historian on weather modification, um, Nikki Florio, a good friend from BeHeroic.com. She's an activist like myself. Um, you know, there's a shot of me with the, the Raytheon guys. But, you know, I've come a long way and I'll continue to grow. Um, you know, my wife supports what I've been, you know, doing. She allowed me to build this room to make a little studio out of. This used to be our dining room. Um, she let me have one of her lights from her photography business <laughs> specifically for this because everybody's bitching about my lighting. Um, but, you know, hey, I'm not a military psyop, guys. I'm just a, you know, I'm a gamer. As soon as I get off this, um, my wife for Christmas bought me battlefield five and a 34 inch monitor which i am super freaking stoked about in fact i will show it to you now oh, look at that beautiful stuff so i share my screen on that screen right there and on this screen right here is you guys on you on facebook getting the live thing and that's my open broadcaster but look at that beautiful freaking monitor oh yeah my wife got a jobby job and she worked so hard and i love her so much for buying me this damn sexy uh um asus 34 inch monitor which i am super freaking stoked about oh oh i'm in love i'm in so much love um but guys, I love you, mean it. It's time for me to go get some headshots. And uh, <laughs> I just had to laugh at the military comments and uh, give you the good news about my thyroid. Once again, look at them beautiful thyroid numbers. Everybody, please clap for your boy. I, I, I put in the work. I got my thyroid acting correctly. And I couldn't be happier. I am not a military psyop, even though I did try to join the military. Uh, that didn't work out so hot. And now I bring the military uh, equipment to you live via Climate Viewer 3D, the world's sexiest situational awareness tool, free to the public, free of charge. So if it's in your heart and you feel like helping a brother out, Please continue to support me at patreon.com slash climate viewer 
or give a one-time donation on PayPal or GoFundMe. I'd greatly appreciate that. And, uh, hey guys, um, you know, it's always funny. You're going to always have to deal with haters and I'd rather laugh about it and make a funny little video and, uh, you know, put it in there with, uh, you know, some good news about my health, which I couldn't be possibly happier about. So love you, mean it. Thank you to all my climate viewers, all my supporters over the past seven years. Thank you to everybody in Facebook chat right now watching this live video. Um, of course, I forgot to hit start recording on OBS, so I'll be downloading a low resolution copy of this and putting it on Facebook, on YouTube. I always hate it when I do that. I for, sometimes I, for, I hit start streaming and I forget to hit start recording. So. There'll be a low quality version of this on YouTube, but whatever. Um, I just had to jump on here and uh, spread the good news about my thyroid because I'm positively stoked. So love you, mean it. Big love for everybody out there who's been a supporter. And uh, remember, guys, information's powerful, and with great power comes great responsibility. So attack ideas, not people, especially this guy, because you might get a video made about you.